Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome back to Accessible Art History, the podcast. This episode is the season eight finale, and I honestly can't believe that we are quickly approaching the end of our journey through 50 objects that shaped Western art. To wrap up our discussion on post-impressionism, I'll be showcasing one of the most famous works of art in the Western canon, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh, painted in the summer of 1889. Art historians often consider it his magnum opus, which is quite interesting because the artist himself described the work as a failure in a November 1889 letter. Starry Night is a stunning combination of color, line, and emotion that showcases some of the most important reasons for the creation of art. Today, you can find it at the centerpiece of the Museum of Modern Arts collection in New York City. So to learn more about this amazing work, keep on listening. Although Starry Night is one of the most recognizable paintings in history, I still think that it's important to discuss its appearance for the sake of the podcast. The work gets its name from the large, dark night sky filled with bright yellow stars. A large cypress tree dominates the left-hand corner, a sleepy small town fills the rest of the bottom space. It's a peaceful and beautiful scene, and it's easy to see why it's so beloved. Art historians can pin the date of this work's creation using letters the artist wrote to his beloved brother Theo. In June 1889, Van Gogh wrote, This morning I saw the countryside from my window, a long time before sunrise, with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. Astronomers confirmed that Venus, which is also known as the morning star, would have been visible in France at the time of Van Gogh's tenure there. This work shows a view outside the east-facing window of Van Gogh's asylum room at Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. The artist painted 21 works from the same place, one of his busiest periods. It's important to note that the village is not based in reality. It was inspired by the villages of his homeland in the Netherlands. Van Gogh admitted himself to this asylum after the famous self-mutilation of his left ear in December 1888. There was enough room in the building for the artist to have both a bedroom and a studio. Having the extra space and getting the help he needed allowed him to access a deeper level of creativity. But why did Van Gogh choose to paint so many scenes from a bedroom view? Although we don't know for sure, there are some theories that have been put forth. Firstly is religion. Van Gogh originally studied to be a priest before officially pursuing art. This could be part of the religious experience or response. In fact, in one of his letters, he stated that he had a tremendous need for, shall I say the word, religion. So I go outside at night to paint the stars. Our historian, Lauren Soth, believes that the blue and yellow represent another facet of religious symbolism. Van Gogh possibly used these colors to represent Christ, as he was a great admirer of Eugene Delacroix, a past podcast subject. He often did this in his own work. Other art historians, Shapiro and Lovgren, put forward religious hypotheses as well. None have been fully accepted, but they are thought-provoking. Another theory for the subject is that it represented Van Gogh's feeling on death. Cypress trees were often used to represent death, and he included them in his work on many occasions. Regardless of the meaning, Starry Night is a powerful expression of emotion. It is nearly impossible to have a discussion about Van Gogh's work without discussing his mental health. It is very important to understand that there is no judgment in this space about his mental health. He lived a long time ago, and science was not as advanced as it is now. I'm not a psychiatrist, so what I'm discussing is the research of others. According to this research, Van Gogh suffered from psychotic episodes, periods of mania and depression, as well as delusions. In addition, he smoked and drank heavily, which affected his physical health as well. This had a profound effect on both his quality of life and his art. In one of his last letters, Van Gogh wrote that, If I could have worked without this accursed disease, what things I might have done? It is tragic that he saw himself this way, because, in the opinion of myself and others, it takes a great man to turn his pain and suffering into something that brings the world so much joy. If you want to see a beautiful representation of this line of thinking, check out the clip from the TV show Doctor Who that I linked in the blog. Next, we're going to continue our discussion on Van Gogh and his art. But first, let's take a quick break. Hey there, my name is Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. 
For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of accessible art history, to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. Now that we're back, let's dive into more about Vincent van Gogh's life because he's more than just his mental health. He was born on March 30th, 1853 in Zundart, the Netherlands, into an upper middle class family. According to letters, he was a quiet and serious child. His parents were quite disappointed in his choice to become an artist, but they begrudgingly accepted it on occasion. Vincent was far closer to his brother Theo. The two would exchange frequent letters, and many of them survived to give us a glimpse into their lives. Before becoming a working artist, Van Gogh worked as an art dealer and also trained to be a priest. However, these occupations didn't satisfy him and he moved around the Netherlands and attended art school. But it was when Van Gogh moved to France that he was able to fully explore his artistic potential. In Paris, he met with other post-impressionists and studied the works of Eugene Jolacroix. This would inspire his bright, vibrant use of color. As we know from our earlier discussion, Van Gogh also lived in the south of France. This is where he met with one of his closest artist friends, Paul Gauguin. The two would talk for hours on end about art theory and painting techniques. In a letter to his brother Theo, dated December 18, 1888, Vincent stated, Gauguin and I talk a lot about Delacroix, Rembrandt, and others. The discussion is excessively electric. We sometimes emerge from it with tired minds like an electric battery after it's run down. Sadly, a little over a year after he painted Starry Night, Vincent van Gogh died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the age of 37. At the time of his death, he had only sold a few paintings and considered himself to be a failure. His beloved brother Theo died about six months after him, and Theo's widow, Johanna, dedicated the rest of her life to preserving the legacy of her artistic genius brother-in-law. It's thanks to her that Van Gogh became as beloved as he is today. In fact, there is an entire museum dedicated to his works in Amsterdam, and they can also be found in major museums around the world. One of the main reasons that Van Gogh's work is so beloved is the way that he combined elements of his art in ways that draw the eye in and hold it there. Firstly, this is achieved through his use of color. In Starry Night, he used ultramarine and cobalt blue, and for the stars and the moon, a rare pigment called Indian Yellow mixed together with Zinc Yellow. This gives the work the intense pigmentation that's almost supernatural. It also is used to create an ideal and imaginative viewpoint. As we saw in last week's episode, the use of color and its effect on the eye was a very important element of post-impressionist art. Next is the use of line. They are the composition. They were not just used to create the scene, but they became the scene. There's a sense of chaos from the swirly curved lines. In addition, there's hardly a straight line to be seen. It's another imaginative element. Finally, there isn't a single source of light. Instead, it reverberates off of the numerous stars that fill the sky. All of these elements combine to create an almost dreamscape of a perfect starry night. Often consider Van Gogh's best work. Starry night is beautiful, but it represents more than just beauty. It's the pain that he felt in life transformed into the ideal landscape for the world to enjoy. And with that, Season 8 is officially over. In a few weeks, I'll be premiering Season 9 on 20th Century Art. We're starting off with Les Demoiselles de Avignon by Pablo Picasso. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.